Pepsi is a carbonated soft drink that is produced and manufactured by PepsiCo. Created and developed in 1893 and introduced as Brad's Drink, it was renamed as Pepsi Cola on August 28, 1898, then to Pepsi in 1961, and in select areas of North America, Pepsi Cola made with real sugar as of 2014. History Pepsi was first introduced as Brad's Drink in New Bern, North Carolina, United States, in 1893 by K. Lef Bradham, who made it at his drugstore where the drink was sold. It was later labeled Pepsi-Cola, named after the digestive enzyme pepsin and cola nuts used in the recipe. Bradham sought to create a fountain drink that was appealing and would aid in digestion and boost energy. In 1903, Bradham moved the bottling of Pepsi-Cola from his drugstore to a rented warehouse. That year, Bradham sold 7,968 gallons of syrup. The next year, Pepsi was sold in 6-ounce bottles, and sales increased to 19,848 gallons. In 1909, automobile race pioneer Barney Oldfield was the first celebrity to endorse Pepsi-Cola, describing it as a bully drink. Refreshing, invigorating, a fine bracer before a race. The advertising theme delicious and healthful was then used over the next two decades. In 1926, Pepsi received its first logo redesigned since the original design of 1905. In 1929, the logo was changed again. In 1931, at the depth of the Great Depression, the Pepsi Cola Company entered bankruptcy a euro in large part due to financial losses incurred by speculating on wildly fluctuating sugar prices as a result of World War I. Assets were sold and Roy C. Megargel bought the Pepsi trademark. Megargel was unsuccessful, and soon Pepsi's assets were purchased by Charles Guth, the president of Loft, Inc. Loft was a candy manufacturer with retail stores that contained soda fountains. He sought to replace Coca-Cola at his store's fountains after Coke refused to give him a discount on syrup. Guth then had Loft's chemists reformulate the Pepsi-Cola syrup formula. On three separate occasions between 1922 and 1933, the Coca-Cola Company was offered the opportunity to purchase the Pepsi-Cola Company, and it declined on each occasion. Pepsi-Cola Trademark the original trademark application for Pepsi-Cola was filed on September 23, 1902 with registration approved on June 16, 1903. In the application statement, K. Lef Bradham describes the trademark as an arbitrary hyphenated word Pepsi-Cola, and indicated that the mark was in continuous use for his business since August 1, 1901. The Pepsi-Cola's description is a flavoring syrup for soda water. The trademark expired on April 15, 1904. A second Pepsi-Cola trademark is on record with the USPTO. The application date submitted by K. Lef Bradham for the second trademark is Saturday, April 15, 1905 with a successful registration date of April 15, 1906, over three years after the original date. Curiously, in this application, K. Lef Bradham states that the trademark had been continuously used in his business, and those from whom title is derived since in the 1905 application the description submitted to the USPTO was for a tonic beverage. The federal status for the 1905 trademark is registered and renewed and is owned by PepsiCo of Purchase, New York. Rise, during the Great Depression Pepsi gained popularity following the introduction in 1936 of a 12-ounce bottle. With a radio advertising campaign featuring the jingle Pepsi Cola hits the spot slash 12 full ounces, that's a lot slash twice as much for a nickel to slash Pepsi Cola is the drink for you, arranged in such a way that the jingle never ends. Pepsi encouraged price-watching consumers to switch obliquely referring to the Coca-Cola standard of 6.5 ounces per bottle for the price of 5 cents, instead of the 12 ounces Pepsi sold at the same price. Coming at a time of economic crisis, the campaign succeeded in boosting Pepsi's status. From 1936 to 1938, Pepsi-Cola's profits doubled. Pepsi's success under Guth came while the loft candy business was faltering. Since he had initially used Loft's finances and facilities to establish the new Pepsi success, 
the near-bankrupt Loft Company sued Guff for possession of the Pepsi-Cola Company. A long legal battle, Guff v. Loft, then ensued, with the case reaching the Delaware Supreme Court and ultimately ending in a loss for Guff. Niche Marketing Walter Mack was named the new president of Pepsi-Cola and guided the company through the 1940s. Mack, who supported progressive causes, noticed that the company's strategy of using advertising for a general audience either ignored African Americans or used ethnic stereotypes in portraying blacks. He realized African Americans were an untapped niche market and that Pepsi stood to gain market share by targeting its advertising directly towards them. To this end, he hired Henan Smith, an advertising executive from the Negro newspaper field to lead an all-black sales team, which had to be cut due to the onset of World War II. In 1947, Walter Mack resumed his efforts, hiring Edward F. Boyd to lead a 12-man team. They came up with advertising portraying black Americans in a positive light, such as one with a smiling mother holding a six-pack of Pepsi while her son reaches up for one. Another ad campaign, titled Leaders in Their Fields, profiled 20 prominent African Americans such as Nobel Peace Prize winner Ralph Bunch and photographer Gordon Parks. Boyd also led a sales team composed entirely of blacks around the country to promote Pepsi. Racial segregation and Jim Crow laws were still in place throughout much of the U.S. Boyd's team faced a great deal of discrimination as a result, from insults by Pepsi co-workers to threats by the Ku Klux Klan. On the other hand, it was able to use racism as a selling point, attacking Coke's reluctance to hire blacks and support by the chairman of Coke for segregationist governor of Georgia Herman Talmadge. As a result, Pepsi's market share as compared to Coke's shot up dramatically. After the sales team visited Chicago, Pepsi's share in the city overtook that of Coke for the first time. This focus on the market for black people caused some consternation within the company and among its affiliates. It did not want to seem focused on black customers for fear white customers would be pushed away. In a meeting at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, Mack tried to assuage the 500 bottlers in attendance by pandering to them, saying, We don't want it to become known as a nigger drink. After Mack left the company in 1950, support for the black sales team faded and it was cut. Marketing From the 1930s through the late 1950s, Pepsi Cola Hits the Spot was the most commonly used slogan in the days of old radio, classic motion pictures, and later television. Its jingle was used in many different forms with different lyrics. With the rise of radio, Pepsi utilized the services of a young, up-and-coming actress named Polly Bergen to promote products, oftentimes lending her singing talents to the classic. Hits the Spot Jingle Film actress Joan Crawford, after marrying then Pepsi Cola president Alfred N. Steele became a spokesperson for Pepsi, appearing in commercials, television specials and televised beauty pageants on behalf of the company. Crawford also had images of the soft drink placed prominently in several of her later films. When Steele died in 1959 Crawford was appointed to the board of directors of Pepsi Cola, a position she held until 1973 although she was not a board member of the larger PepsiCo, created in 1965. The Buffalo Bisons, an American hockey league team, was sponsored by Pepsi-Cola in its later years. The team adopted the beverage's red, white and blue color scheme along with a modification of the Pepsi logo. The Bisons ceased operations in 1970. Through the intervening decades, there have been many different Pepsi theme songs sung on television by a variety of artists, from Joni Summers to the Jacksons to Britney Spears. In 1975, Pepsi introduced the Pepsi Challenge marketing campaign where PepsiCo set up a blind tasting between Pepsi Cola and rival Coca Cola. During these blind taste tests, the majority of participants picked Pepsi as the better tasting of the two soft drinks. PepsiCo took great advantage of the campaign with television commercials reporting the results to the public. In 1996, PepsiCo launched the highly successful Pepsi Stuff marketing strategy. By 2002, the strategy was cited by Promo Magazine as one of 16 ageless wonders that helped redefine promotion marketing. In 2007, PepsiCo redesigned its cans for the 14th time, and for the first time, 
included more than 30 different backgrounds on each can, introducing a new background every three weeks. One of its background designs includes a string of repetitive numbers, 73,774. This is a numerical expression from a telephone keypad of the word Pepsi. In late 2008, Pepsi overhauled its entire brand, simultaneously introducing a new logo and a minimalist label design. The redesign was comparable to Coca-Cola's earlier simplification of its can and bottle designs. Pepsi also teamed up with YouTube to produce its first daily entertainment show called PopTub. This show deals with pop culture, internet viral videos, and celebrity gossip. In 2009, Bring Home the Cup changed to Team Up and Bring Home the Cup. The new installment of the campaign asks for team involvement and an advocate to submit content on behalf of their team for the chance to have the Stanley Cup delivered to the team's hometown by Mark Messier. Pepsi has official sponsorship deals with three of the four major North American professional sports leagues, the National Football League, National Hockey League and Major League Baseball. Pepsi also sponsors Major League Soccer. It also has the naming rights to Pepsi Center, an indoor sports facility in Denver, Colorado. In 1997, after his sponsorship with Coca-Cola ended, NASCAR driver Jeff Gordon signed a long-term contract with Pepsi, and he drives with the Pepsi logos on his car with various paint schemes for about two races each year, usually a darker paint scheme during nighttime races. Pepsi has remained as one of his sponsors ever since. Pepsi has also sponsored the NFL Rookie of the Year Awards since 2002. Pepsi also has sponsorship deals in international cricket teams. The Pakistan cricket team is one of the teams that the brand sponsors. The team wears the Pepsi logo on the front of their test and ODI test match clothing. In July 2009, Pepsi started marketing itself as Pepsi in Argentina in response to its name being mispronounced by 25% of the population and as a way to connect more with all of the population. In October 2008, Pepsi announced that it would be redesigning its logo and rebranding many of its products by early 2009. In 2009, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi and Pepsi Max began using all lowercase fonts for name brands and Diet Pepsi Max was rebranded as Pepsi Max. The brand's blue and red globe trademark became a series of smiles, with a central white band arcing at different angles depending on the product until 2010. Pepsi released this logo in US in late 2008, and later it was released in 2009 in Canada, Brazil, Bolivia, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Colombia, Argentina, Puerto Rico. Costa Rica, Panama, Chile, Dominican Republic, the Philippines and Australia. In the rest of the world the new logo has been released in 2010. The old logo is still used in several markets internationally, and has been phased out most recently in France and Mexico. The UK started to use the new Pepsi logo on cans in an order different from the US can. Starting in mid-2010, all Pepsi variants, regular, diet, and Pepsi Max, have started using only the medium-size Smile Pepsi Globe. Pepsi and Pepsi Max cans and bottles in Australia now carry the localized version of the new Pepsi logo. The word Pepsi and the logo are in the new style, while the word Max is still in the previous style. Pepsi Wild Cherry finally received the 2008 Pepsi design in March 2010. In 2011, for New York Fashion Week, Diet Pepsi introduced a skinny can that is taller and has been described as a sassier version of the traditional can that Pepsi says was made in celebration of beautiful, confident women. The company's equating of skinny, and beautiful, and confident is drawing criticism from brand critics, consumers who do not back the skinny is better ethos, and the National Eating Disorders Association, which said that it takes offense to the can and the company's thoughtless and irresponsible comments. PepsiCo Incorporated is a Fashion Week sponsor. This new can was made available to consumers nationwide in March. In April 2011, Pepsi announced that customers will be able to buy a complete stranger a soda at a new social vending machine, and even record a video that the stranger would see when they pick up the gift. In March 2012, Pepsi introduced Pepsi Next, a cola with half the calories of regular Pepsi. In March 2013, 
Pepsi for the first time in 17 years reshaped its 20-ounce bottle. In November 2013, Pepsi issued an apology on their official Swedish Facebook page for using pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo as a voodoo doll in various scenes before the Sweden v Portugal 2014 FIFA World Cup playoff game. Rivalry with Coca-Cola According to Consumer Reports, in the 1970s, the rivalry continued to heat up the market. Pepsi conducted blind taste tests in stores, in what was called the Pepsi Challenge. These tests suggested that more consumers preferred the taste of Pepsi to Coke. The sales of Pepsi started to climb, and Pepsi kicked off the challenge across the nation. This became known as the Cola Wars. In 1985, the Coca-Cola Company, amid much publicity, changed its formula. The theory has been advanced that New Coke, as the reformulated drink came to be known, was invented specifically in response to the Pepsi challenge. However, a consumer backlash led to Coca-Cola quickly reintroducing the original formula as not Coke previous to 1985, but to Coca-Cola Classic. According to Beverage Digest's 2008 report on carbonated soft drinks, PepsiCo's U.S. market share is 30.8 percent, while the Coca-Cola company's is 42.7 percent. Coca-Cola outsells Pepsi in most parts of the U.S., notable exceptions being Central Appalachia, North Dakota, and Utah. In the city of Buffalo, New York, Pepsi outsells Coca-Cola by a 2 to 1 margin. Overall, Coca-Cola continues to outsell Pepsi in almost all areas of the world. However, exceptions include Oman, India, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, the Canadian provinces of Quebec, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, and Northern Ontario. Pepsi had long been the drink of Canadian francophones and it continues to hold its dominance by relying on local Quay copyright bar copyright qua celebrities to sell its product. PepsiCo introduced the Quebec slogan here, it's Pepsi in response to Coca-Cola ads proclaiming around the world, it's Coke. As of 2012, Pepsi is the third most popular carbonated drink in India with a 15% market share, behind Sprite and Thumbs Up. In comparison, Coca-Cola is the fourth most popular carbonated drink occupying a mere 8.8% of the Indian market share. By most accounts, Coca-Cola was India's leading soft drink until 1977 when it left India after a new government ordered the Coca-Cola company to turn over its secret formula for Coke and dilute its stake in its Indian unit as required by the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. In 1988, PepsiCo gained entry to India by creating a joint venture with the Punjab government-owned Punjab Agro Industrial Corporation and Voltas India Limited. This joint venture marketed and sold the whole Pepsi until 1991 when the use of foreign brands was allowed. PepsiCo bought out its partners and ended the joint venture in 1994. In 1993, the Coca-Cola company returned in pursuance of India's liberalization policy. In Russia, Pepsi initially had a larger market share than Coke but it was undercut once the Cold War ended. In 1972, PepsiCo struck a barter agreement with the then government of the Soviet Union, in which PepsiCo was granted exportation and Western marketing rights to Stolichnaya Vodka in exchange for importation and Soviet marketing of Pepsi Cola. This exchange led to Pepsi Cola being the first foreign product sanctioned for sale in the USSR, reminiscent of the way that Coca Cola became a cultural icon and its global spread spawned words like Coca Colonization. Pepsi Cola and its relation to the Soviet system turned it into an icon. In the early 1990s, the term Pepsi Stroika began appearing as a pun on Perestroika, the reform policy of the Soviet Union under Mikhail Gorbachev. Critics viewed the policy as an attempt to usher in Western products and deals there with the old elites. Pepsi, as one of the first American products in the Soviet Union, became a symbol of that relationship and the Soviet policy. This was reflected in Russian author Viktor Pelevin's book Generation P. In 1989, Billy Joel mentioned the rivalry between the two companies in the song We Didn't Start the Fire. The line Rock and Roller Cola Wars refers to Pepsi and Coke's usage of various musicians in advertising campaigns. 
Coke used Paula Abdul, while Pepsi used Michael Jackson. Both companies then competed to get other musicians to advertise its beverages. In 1992, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Coca-Cola was introduced to the Russian market. As it came to be associated with the new system, and Pepsi to the old, Coca-Cola rapidly captured the significant market share that might otherwise have required years to achieve. By July 2005, Coca-Cola enjoyed a market share of 19.4%, followed by Pepsi with 13%. Pepsi did not sell soft drinks in Israel until 1991. Many Israelis and some American Jewish organizations attributed Pepsi's previous reluctance to do battle to the Arab boycott. Pepsi, which has a large and lucrative business in the Arab world, denied that, saying that economic, rather than political, reasons kept it out of Israel. Pepsiman, Pepsiman is an official Pepsi mascot from Pepsi's Japanese corporate branch. The design of the Pepsiman character is attributed to Canadian comic book artist Travis Charest, created sometime around the mid-1990s. Pepsiman took on three different outfits, each one representing the current style of the Pepsi can in distribution. Twelve commercials were created featuring the character. His role in the advertisements is to appear with Pepsi to thirsty people or people craving soda. Pepsiman happens to appear at just the right time with the product. After delivering the beverage, sometimes Pepsiman would encounter a difficult and action-oriented situation which would result in injury. Another more minor mascot, Pepsi Woman, also featured in a few of her own commercials for Pepsi Twist. Her appearance is basically a female Pepsiman wearing a lemon-shaped balaclava. In 1996, Sega AM2 released the Sega Saturn version of its arcade fighting game Fighting Vipers. In this game Pepsiman was included as a special character, with his speciality listed as being the ability to quench one's thirst. He does not appear in any other version or sequel. In 1999, Kid developed a video game for the PlayStation entitled Pepsiman. As the titular character, the player runs on rails, skateboards, rolls, and stumbles through various areas, avoiding dangers and collecting cans of Pepsi, all while trying to reach a thirsty person as in the commercials. Ingredients In the United States, Pepsi is made with carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, sugar, phosphoric acid, caffeine, citric acid and natural flavors. A can of Pepsi has 41 grams of carbohydrates, 30 mg of sodium, 0 grams of fat, 0 grams of protein, 38 mg of caffeine and 150 calories. The caffeine-free Pepsi Cola contains the same ingredients but without the caffeine. In August 2010, PepsiCo entered into a four-year agreement with Cinemix for the development of artificial high-potency sweeteners for PepsiCo beverages. Under the contract, PepsiCo is paying $30 million to Cinemix for the research and future royalties on PepsiCo products sold using Cinemix technology. According to PepsiCo, this collaboration will focus on the discovery, development and commercialization of sweet enhancers with the purpose of providing lower-calorie PepsiCo beverages. PepsiCo will have exclusive rights to the Cinemix sweet flavor ingredients developed through the collaboration. In September 2012 Pepsi launched a new product called Pepsi Next which contains 30% less sugar and added stevia as a zero-calorie sweetener. The product was rolled out in Australia and is expected to be launched in the U.S. starting February 27. Slogans American slogans, 1939 a euro 1950, twice as much for a nickel, 1950, more bounced at the ounce, 1950 a euro 1957, any weather is Pepsi weather, 1957 a euro 1958, say Pepsi, please, 1959 to 1960, the sociables prefer Pepsi, 1961 a euro 1964, now it's Pepsi for those who think young, 1964 a Euro 1967, come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation, 1967 a Euro 1969, taste that beats the others. Cold, Pepsi pours it on. 1969 a Euro 1975, you've got a lot to live, and Pepsi's got a lot to give, 1977 a Euro 1980, join the Pepsi people, 
1980 Euro 1981, Catch That Pepsi Spirit, 1981 Euro 1983, Pepsi's Got Your Taste for Life, 1983 Euro 1984, Pepsi Now. Take the Challenge. 1984 Euro 1988 and 1990 to 1991, Pepsi. The Choice of a New Generation, 1989, Pepsi. A Generation Ahead, 1991 Euro 1992, Gotta Have It Slash Chill Out, 1992, The Choice Is Yours, 1992 Euro 1993, Be Young, Have Fun, Drink Pepsi, 1993 Euro 1994, Right Now, 1994 Euro 1995, Double Dutch Bus, 1995, Nothing Else Is a Pepsi, 1995 Euro 1996, Drink Pepsi. Get Stuff. 1996, Change the Script, 1997 Euro 1998, Generation Next, 1998 Euro 1999, It's the Cola, 1999, Ask for More, 1999 Euro 2000, for those who think young slash the joy of Pepsi Cola, 2003, it's the Cola slash dare for more, 2006 a Euro 2007, why you dog in me slash taste the one that's forever young, 2007 a Euro 2008, more happy slash taste the ones that's forever young, 2008. Pepsi Stuff Super Bowl Commercial, 2008, Pepsi is number one TH Cent V Commercial, 2008 a Euro Present, Something for Everyone, 2009 a Euro Present, Refresh Everything Slash Every Generation Refreshes the World, 2010 a Euro Present, Every Pepsi Refreshes the World, 2011 a Euro Present Summertime is Pepsi Time, 2011 a Euro Present Born in the Carolinas, 2012, Where There's Pepsi, There's Music a Euro Used for the 2012 Super Bowl Commercial featuring Melanie Amaro, 2012, Change the Game, 2012. The best drink created worldwide. 2013 a Euro present, live for now a Euro used for the 2013 Super Bowl halftime show commercial featuring Beyonce, international slogans, 1990 a Euro 1991, the early high right choice baby, aha, 1996 a Euro 1997, Pepsi, there's nothing official about it held in India Sri Lanka, 1999 a Euro 2006, ye deal may and more. 2002, Change the World, 2000 a Euro Present, Pepsi e finals hey body meaning there is a lot of thirst, 2009 a Euro Present, ye hi yaun jistam meri jaan, 2009 a Euro Present, my Pepsi my way, 2009 a Euro Present, refresca to mundu, 2009, joy at Ford, 2010 a Euro Present, Pepsi, Sarap Magbao, 2010 a Euro 2011, Battle do Zamana, 2010 a Euro 2011, Love. 2010 a Euro present, Podser Bomb, Podser Muto Bomb, Podser Pepsi a Euro Brazil and Portugal, 2011 a Euro present, Change the Game, 2011 a Euro present, Dunia High Deal Wall and Key, 2011 a Euro present, ICI, Kissed Pepsi, 2011 a Euro present, Go Next. 2013 a Euro present, Deal may and jabby meaning heart requires now, 2013 a Euro present, oh yes abby meaning oh yes now, global slogans, 2013 a Euro present, embrace your past, but live for now global campaign featuring Beyonce. Variants. Fictional drinks, Pepsi Perfect, a vitamin enriched Pepsi variation shown in the movie Back to the Future Part 2 and scenes set in the year 2015. Pepsi Next. Pepsi variation shown in the 2011 Japanese anime series, Tiger and Bunny. Pepsi then released a Pepsi Next variant in Japan in 2012, perhaps for promotional purposes. See also References, Notes Bibliography, Beverage World Magazine, January 1998, Celebrating a Century of Refreshment, Pepsi a Euro The First 100 Years, Stoddard, Bob. Pepsi Cola Euro 100 Years, General Publishing Group, Los Angeles, California, USA, History and Milestones, Pepsi Packet, Louis, J.C. and Yezijin, Harvey Z. The Cola Wars, Everest House, Publishers, New York, New York, USA, External Links.
Pepsi website, Pepsi Gallery Euro Pepsi promotional site at the Wayback Machine, PepsiCo, incorporated at nomore.org, Pepsi page on PepsiCo UK and Ireland.